Okay, welcome everybody to this evening's ACY Securities webinar. My name is Duncan Cooper. So tonight's webinar is Live Forex Market Review, so we'll get straight into it. Before we get into it, if you can read through the disclaimer. Now, if you're on our YouTube live stream, I cannot see the chat, but you're more than welcome to watch, or I've given you a link to the webinar, just go and register and drop into the webinar so you can chat to me. Other than that, for everybody else, if you can read through the disclaimer, any conversation can be to the webinar chat or the question and answer box if you have a question or two. And uh, way to you, good evening. So everybody please read through the disclaimer before we move along. All right, let's move along. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Duncan Cooper. I'm a senior market strategist and trading mentor here at ECY Securities. And I am a full-time Forex trader. I've been trading now for more than 15 years, mentoring for more than 10. If you want to contact me, my email is there, duncan.cooper at acy.com. And through the week, you can connect with me at our website, go to acy.com, go to the market news tab, or at our YouTube channel, ACY Security Australia. And you can connect with me through the week as well at my Twitter and LinkedIn there. Um, I am putting some analysis through there. So if you want to connect with me and read that, then just connect with me there. All right, through the week as well, we have our Telegram channel. If you want to get access to the ACY Securities Telegram channel, just contact Nathan Bray. He will give you access. As well, if you want to get access to my chart layouts and templates, just contact Nathan. He will be able to fix you up. So I put him in the chat there, his contact details, just get in touch if you have a question or two. All right, so let's get into tonight. So we'll first look at the news. I may just need to refresh this. It was playing up with me the other day, it wasn't telling me the right time. All right. So we're into Thursday here. So tonight we have the unemployment claims. That might be a little bit of a leader to what's going to happen tomorrow with the US job figures. So expecting 211K, a little bit higher than the previous week. And then tomorrow we've got the Canadian and the US job figures at 10.30 p.m. So more of the US job figures is the, is the volatile issue here. So... Market may be a little bit subdued leading into that. We have had a bit of a rally on pairs to the US dollar, uh, maybe topping out leading into tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. So those are the news events coming up from the US side there that could affect the market. So let's get into the charts. We'll just start with the dollar index. So this is the day of charts been moving up, having a one day dip. It is fast approaching the next level of resistance up here at 107.68. So we may see a challenge of that as we get into the job figures release. We'll have to wait and see. But a very clear uptrend at the moment. It's a bit overextended, but clear uptrend. And then we're seeing a clear uptrend here on the day chart. All trends are up. Monthly trends up. Weekly trends up. Day trends up. Very strong at the moment. Attend the yields on the two and the 10-year bonds in the US are growing with the expectation that the Fed's going to be holding their rates high for a longer period than expected, initially expected, and maybe there's another rate hike or two coming in. We might get another hike this year before the year's out. So that's what's keeping the US dollar strong. And we're not seeing any signal yet that we're having any kind of one or two week decline we may, on the weekly chart here, once we hit weekly resistance here at 107.67, we may see a little bit of a stutter there. We'll just have to wait and see. But if we see a stutter, that means pairs to the US dollar will start to move up. SP 500, this is the weekly chart look. We in a downtrend on the weekly chart. Failing at the larger range, 79% Fib area here of a larger range. And we're lower top, lower bottom. I have said we're a little bit overextended, we may need a weekly rally, and we are at a level of 
support here at 41.94.27. And we're having a natural bit of a natural bounce yesterday as we got very close to that level. Now, whether or not this wants to have a much I've been, I did on Tuesday look at this larger range from the weekly range that's been forming. Will we get a larger rally back up? I don't know if it's going to do that. We may just be looking at the smaller swings at the moment. So the most immediate swing, because the last lower top form was against resistance. So we may just, any rally may just form within this range at the moment. So we could just pop up to that 62% level or the 79% level within that range and then turn over to put in another lower top. So we're having a bit of a natural bounce there just on support. But no, it's not showing any massive sign that of it wants to have maybe a lot more of a stronger corrective rally and have a week or two up at, the, at this stage, but it is a bit overextended. So if you want to get short, you could be looking at the 62 or the 79% levels here. We can just drop that down to four hour chart. You know, you could be looking at This, you know, moving up to the 62, that's, that's 4279 or a little bit higher up at the 79% level, 4302. Watch, looking for a rally and then a turnover. Assuming it can have a rally. At the moment, it's just holding at the 50% level. All right, let's drop into the Euro dollar. And my drawing tool is just playing with me. All right. Good all coming up. Now on Tuesday, I said, so we're into Thursday here, Wednesday, Tuesday, we were down here. I was saying it was a bit too far down to be a seller. We might come back up to weekly resistance. So we're actually in a weekly support area. This top line here could be now resistance. So go to your weekly chart. We're trying to break below this weekly low and this weekly low, getting some support at the lower level at 104.81. But the higher level at 105.16 could be acting as resistance now. And I said, watch for that maybe level to be resistance for then the opportunity for price to then move back down again to try and break through the next level. So what we are seeing is Yesterday, we tried to trade above. There's a wick or shadow at the top of the candle. So we couldn't close above this air, this triple bottom area. And that could well be where the market's getting held at now for the next turnover to move down. So it's already through the course of the London session, come back up to retest 105.16 and held. So that would be where I'll be watching today is does the market offer you another opportunity to look for a fail? We had a bit of a trend line failure there. Once we've moved below, held, moved down, this may come back up to 105.16 once more and fail. You can see yesterday held there once, moved above, back down, held, held, did move above through Asia, but we're back below. So 105.16 is the level to watch. You know, can you get a tight entry against that level? You know, let's say you're trading here to get a very good risk to reward trading there with a stop above yesterday's high up here. Yesterday's high was up 105.32. So you might be able to get away with about a 20 pip, 25 pip stop. Trading at uh, 105.16, 25 pip stop will get you at 105.41 approximate. And then you're just waiting to see you know, are we holding here to trade down? So what I'm saying here is, you know, are we holding at resistance? Uh, that is the question. So you might see another, you might see another retest of that level. Stop above the high. Then you're looking to trade down for a test of support. And can we break down and to put in a fresh low for the week? All right. So. 
That's going to be the questions for the trading day. Does 105.16 hold as resistance? Right, Yuri Yen. Now, of course, we had some intervention. Well, I was discussing the possibility of intervention. And uh, it was interesting on the dollar yen, it just got to 150 after the US news. And then instantly, of course, it looks like we had some intervention. So clearly, the Bank of Japan was looking at 150 to get touched before they did anything. So, Yuri Yen, what has been rather consolidatory is broken down. And over the last two trading days after the intervention, we've been holding up weekly support broken, 156.58. We could maybe just sneak back up to day support at 156.86. So back to the four hour chart here. You can see it's been moving in, coming down, moving in on the last four hour candle and rejecting. So is it going to be holding this area? That is the question. Uh, from a day chart range perspective, the whole range is there. So we're really not into the 62% level or the 79% level, which I don't like. If, we're, if, if the market's operating within the larger range, it's going to come up to at least test this 62 level, which is much more closely to the daily support level at 156.86. So 156.86 to 156.92. That could be where the market's trying to get to so as i said last night in my webinar you know i look at levels that i like and then i'm waiting for price to come to the level and if it doesn't get there well i miss out so in terms of levels at the moment when i'm using the larger range my level would be looking for price to come up to 156.86 and 156.92 before failing I can note though that there's a range here and then there's a 79 percent level in here at uh, 156.51 and that range could be actually in focus as well so it's a little bit tricky at the moment which range to be working with ultimately though you could be watching 156.58 at the moment dropping down to 15 minute chart. And you can see yesterday, we're just trying to get above, back below, back above, back below, back above. Then we move down. Is just monitor at the moment, you know, for another failure. We might put a swing point low in here. So then, you know, do you see a trend line break failure here? If you do, maybe we can't get any higher. And if you can get a tight entry, Good risk reward because at least you might be want to be targeting down to the low that got formed down at 154.43. That would be excellent risk reward setting that trade up. So just need to work out which level. Now, as well, that's last month's low in here as well at 156.58. So weekly broken support level, it's last month's low. And last week's low, this red line is where we were topping out yesterday. And we've tagged that level again today. So at the moment, last week's low coming in at 156.70 is the area. So really, over the last 24 hours, it's just this area here where the sellers are clearly sitting. All right. So you get limited risk right now by simply selling and, you know, selling because we're holding here. Stop just goes above the high. And your risk, you know, your risk is about... About 30 pips. Or you could be waiting for a bit more confirmation that you get a trend line break and a failure there. Got a nice little 15 minute inverted hammer up there at last week's high and yesterday's three, three tops up there. So that's where the sellers are. It is struggling there. So you just need to work out how much confirmation you need for reversal at that level. All right, euro pound. This is what I was watching for on Tuesday. And you can see we spiked up there. And then I just want to make sure that was Tuesday. I don't want to say it was when it wasn't. Maybe Monday. Yeah, oh, hang on. 
was the third, so it was Tuesday. And it was after, I think it was just after the webinar. So 79% failure up here. Now it hasn't been able to break the low and it is looking a little bit consolidatory. So what we are seeing on the higher time frames is that high point up here on the weekly chart is a weekly, weekly chart top. Negative week last week, what we've done is retrace back inside the range of last week. It's putting the lower top. And that retracement is quite clear seen on the four hour chart. So I've discussed over the last month in a webinar, the weekly range. There's last week's range. It was a negative candle, came up to the 79% level. So I will be anticipating that maybe we now we're gonna see a move down through last week's low towards the 127 extension. However, we could see another, you know, we could, it's a bit range bound here. We could still see another test of this area up there. So as a trader, if I wanted to trade the Euro pound at the moment, I would just be watching up here. That's the area to have traded at this week. And it may revisit there. And if it does revisit there, failed all there last week. We could fail once more up there again this week and then trade back down the range. All right, I will be, I'll be looking up there if I wanted to trade that pair. All right, I might head, head into the pound first. Now, this is how I left the four hour chart last Tuesday gone. This week's Tuesday just gone. I was looking up to see whether the price could get up to 121.90, which is the daily chart broken support over here. Not being able to quite get there. You can see the wick on the top of the candle, very much like the euro dollar. And we're just being a little bit short of the 62 level and that level. Again, it's a question of, well, has it failed there? I'm always a little bit worried if it hasn't actually hit the level that I'm watching. So I don't tend to engage down here. I would just wait to see if this can have another another go up here and actually hit the level I'm watching. All right, because that's the most opportune level because we haven't quite got there yet. So it might just need a news event just to force a little bit of volatility into the market and just get price to spike up. You know, the US news coming out this evening, which is the unemployment claims, that could come maybe a little bit worse than expected and we could see a bounce. So, you know, to the 15 minute chart. It's holding the central pivot at the moment, but up, up here is my area. 121.90, I would be looking at 121.90. You got the 62% low at 121.81. So the area that I would like to see price get to is up to 122, that area there. Primarily can price get up to trade at that resistance level. All right. Now through the day as well, you might see just simply price want to come up to re-challenge this little area here or just yesterday's high and then fail. All right, because I can also say there's yesterday's high, but since then it put in that low. And then once it put in that low, we haven't been able to get up to that, sorry, high. We put in that high for yesterday's high then an intraday high, and today we haven't been able to get to that area. So quite clearly, this little zone here too is where the sellers are. So, you know, trying to look and be patient. High time frame trend is down. So trying to be patient for price to get to a clear area where the sellers are. That's those two zones up there where you're going to find the sellers. All right, pound yen. Had a, a little bit more of a bounce than the euro yen because it has made the 62% retracement. So this is the four hour chart. Look, here's your day chart. It has come up to the 62. You got these little four hour, sorry, these day chart lows here. Not able to hold below 180.41, which is actually monthly supports. 
but we are holding against these lows. So those lows, I'm just going to color them in. It's last month's low. It's last week's low. And you can see the last four hour candle is just stabbed into that area. So that's, you know, that's the high probability area we found at the 62 level in the most immediate term. In the market today, getting into last month's low, last week's low, that's where the market's been held. All right, so that's the obvious level to try to look to engage at if it can retest there once more today. But, you know, with the news coming out, up at the 62% level, we could retest that once more and the figure. So picking a level like, watch a level for failure and then do, can you get yourself short? Look for a trend line break or something. All right, we're in the sell zone there. You know, this big drop, the drop started from there. So we created a massive imbalance and price just came back yesterday to the start of the imbalance, amazing. And that is looking now, you know, the market's going, okay, we know, we know where we dropped from when the market got intervened. And then of course, people come in and bought it back up, but the buyers are prepared now to push it beyond to where the intervention was because they're going, well, why do I wanna be long above that level? Because that's where the market got intervened. So I don't want to be long beyond that level because there's a high chance we could have another intervention and then I'm going to be wrong. So you can quite clearly see that if you get back up to the intervention level, that's of course a great level to sell at and you can see where the high of the day came in yesterday. All right. And I don't, know, quite, I don't think we've quite met on the euro yen here. We haven't, we haven't been up to the intervention level. Pretty much around about the 157 level. So but it doesn't look like that can get there. So Euro, Yen and Pound Yen are looking very similar at the moment. They're struggling at points where they should be struggling at. Are we you know, gonna see a continuation, back to the four hour chart, are we gonna see a continuation here of this pair now? Coming down, to have another leg down. You know, we've moved down, We've 62% rallied. Are we now moving down to retest? And now we're going to move down to the 127 extension. So 127 extension, I'll just draw it in with this line. Are we moving down to 176.79 over the course of maybe next, you know, three next week? We won't see. All right, get into Aussie yen. Now the Aussie yen, I think has rallied back to pretty much the top of the intervention. It's rallied back up to last week's low. So very much like pound yen there, we're back up to last week's low and last week's low is holding the market. So here's a day chart look. We've had this fire up monthly resistance up here, 79% level. We could be seeing a long-term move down to maybe the 90-20 level, 127 extension of that large range. Support did come in on weekly support at 93.03, this weekly high over here. So it could be, could end up being range bound once more, but you know, structurally now it's moved to a downtrend, it's bounced, it's bounced back up to Daily resistance, 94.66 there. Just here, which is last week's low. Ninety-four six six five, And you can see today, that was where you, you needed to look for your short today. All right last week's low and look where the intervention happened there. All right, so we just just crept above, just crept above the little top, 15 minute top there just before the intervention started. So pretty much back to where the intervention started and now we've been selling off. So 
you know, hindsight, looking at what's been happening, that's that was that was your entry in here, trend line breakdown. Now you could obviously be watching through the day for another opportunity to sell up here if price wants to get back up there. Assuming we have a down day today, a negative day down. So hypothetically, let's say we can get down to today's low. You know, I would be starting to think about how I'm going to engage. You know, put, there's always the best place to get in. That would have been up here. You could still, you know, I'm just getting right now and put your stop above today's high. That would, of course, give you about a, it's only 40 pips of risk potentially thereabouts. You could wait to see if this could cycle back up a bit, but this is going to put a range in today. And then of course, tomorrow will come. And then in all probability, we'll then maybe retrace back up inside today's range tomorrow. So if you don't get on board today for maybe the next move down, you know, just drag a fib from the high of today to wherever the low is. And then tomorrow, you know, look, look at the fib levels to see if you can get a retracement back up within the range of today. It's trading tomorrow for then the opportunity to trade down. All right, assuming we have a down day. All right, the trend is down. So this looks like a very good failure point. So at the moment, I'd just be watching to see whether price would revisit up here or close to so that you could execute a short. But it's a very good learning couple of days where we get these large interventions and then price comes back up pretty much to the top of the intervention then holds. We're seeing that on Aussie yen, pound yen, euro yen. Well, I thought euro yen hasn't quite got back up there, but especially on the pound yen and the Aussie yen net. All right, Aussie dollar. This is the area highlighted on Tuesday. So this is an area of broken weekly supports. Two weekly lows in here that we've been struggling at, but we committed below the other day. And now it's becoming resistance. You know, my webinar today when I was showing you some examples of broken support from last month becoming resistance, here's Here's a potential of an example there. All right. So at the moment, if you're not short, I would be watching for price to be coming back up to this level for a retest and failure. So if you drop to the 15 minute chart, drag a fib in. 62 levels right inside, just inside the area. 63.59. So I'd be watching to see if we can come up into that area, watch the 62 level for failure to then trade down. All right, but ultimately looking for a retest of that resistance area. Try to get above earlier in Asia. And as well, it's worth, you know, looking at price action, what it did through Asia, it created this imbalance here. which got a little bit filled just there. But then we try to move above resistance, failed, and we come all the way back down to fill the imbalance. All right. And we, you often get the, these, what we call skinny legs up, tries to get above, and then comes straight back down to fill this area. And then false breaks and rejects the resistance area. All right. So look for a rally. I just keep dragging that fib down if it keeps moving down. The rally that I'm talking about here may not come till tomorrow if it comes at all, but you know, I will be looking for a rally retest up here at 63.57 area. All right, New Zealand yen had a very strong failure up, up here, haven't we? from the weekly and monthly chart. There's a monthly little area over here. We're very high up on the New Zealand yen. So we're negative for the month at the moment. Most definitely negative for the week. Actual trends remain up. I mean, we're down for the week, 
but this is still higher bottom, higher top. So potentially this could still carry on up, but there's lots of selling pressure at the resistance high points. And uh, tricky one at the moment, because I can see this going all the way back up to want to have another retest of the high. The four hour chart. I would just be monitoring this range at the moment. It's, you know, not as easy going as some of the other yen pairs. This has only really just rallied back to the point of the initial drop from the other day, but I'd be a lot happier looking up here for a short. Yeah, 79 percent level 89.53 up to 89.68 resistance, weekly resistance high that we failed at last week. That would be a much more my preferred area because this is only at a 38 percent level. Price very rarely just retraces 38 percent, so that's my concern. Just drop into the 15 minute. So there's your, you know, there's the. I guess the high area that you want to look at, we'll just go from the high to just put a little color area in here. That's the high we had before. Like that's that's an imbalance from yesterday. It's up here. That's where we started the um, drop. So we haven't got to the point of the drop yet. So there's the potential that to still move up. So some of, some of the pairs have got to their drop point. This one hasn't. So I'd be concerned that we need to get back up to the drop point. All right. So, but I would much prefer to see this come up, up to the high area for an opportunity to short. New Zealand dollar. This was an area of support I was highlighting from Tuesday, which we did move through, but quite clear some supports were coming in there on the four hour chart. So I'm just gonna to go to the daily. Very range bound, doesn't like the high area up here. And this is monthly resistance here, but 59.85, that's the level to watch. You know, the price moving into that four hour support area now bouncing, having the fib across the range, 62 levels very close up here to the resistance area from the monthly low at 59.85 and then there's another high here but there's a few areas where you know price could get to just want to have a look which is the significant high 60 15 All right, back to the fire chart. So this area here, 59.85 or even up here. Now we don't know what the job figures are gonna bring tomorrow. Could be poor, poor for the US dollar and we could see a very high rally. So 79% levels at 60.10, 60.15 is your resistance, 60 level. That high there is at 60.07. Those two levels I'll be watching at the moment, see if price can come up to those levels. All right, trend is down on the, you know, that's really turned the focus back to down. So I'm not really, I'm not looking at trying to trade this up. I'm just watching if price can come to a level that I like to start to look for a short. All right, dollar card, it's very strong looking very much like the US dollar index. And this level here, I would suggest is very similar to this level here. All right. If we hit this level here on the dollar index weekly chart, we're gonna hit, where's my dollar CAD gone? We're gonna hit this level up here on the dollar CAD. So at the moment we have cleared this weekly high and a daily high here. And we've clearly above the seven numbers. So yesterday, we actually pulled back to that high. You see it here on the four hour chart. We started to sit on top of that area. So broken, 
resistance became support. And then we've had a 79% kind of pullback. There it is. So we are in the profit taking phase of the FIB tool at the moment. So really for the dollar CAD, you wait for the next pullback on the four hour chart because we're getting into close to the 127 extension there. So really need to start to monitor the next range here for a pullback. If you want to look to get in on this pair, but it's getting very high up in the range. And as well, this pair has got the Canadian job figures and the US job figures coming out tomorrow. So I would generally speaking, believe in that pair alone, but it's in a strong up trends. It could well be going up to target the monthly high at 138.61. So I would you know, look to trade, look for a pullback. Don't be buying at the top of the move. But for those of you that were with me in the webinars last month, and we talked about last month's high, last month's low, there's last month's high. See how it became support here in the new month, in the first week of the month, we've, we've broken above, became support to move higher. Now we may revisit this high and still be support. So if you like trading the dollar CAD, we may well still have another pullback to 36.94. That could still be support for another move higher during the course of the month. All right, dollar franc. Just most definitely starting to slow down here. It is from a monthly perspective, still in rally mode. It's lower top, lower bottom. We've touched the 79% level or got very close to. All right, we are above the weekly high and last month's high here. Just a fraction short of the 79% level. It's definitely an area where this market could top, this particular pair could top in terms of, does it put in a lower top in this area on the monthly scale? So at the moment, if, we, if we're looking for a turnover, I think you wanna wait for the day chart trend to turn down because at the moment, the pullback that we're seeing here is just sitting on top of last month's. Well, this isn't last month's high. Last month's high is, it is this line here, but it's just a high of one of these candles. Uh, this is just a weekly high point here, but today we pull back to that weekly high point, 91.47, and we could be getting support there. And it looks like a 62% retracement there on the day chart swing. It's just the opposite look of the Euro dollar. Turn to the four hour chart. There's your 62 level with your weekly support level, four hour support here too. That looks like the support level for a move higher they're just there. Tim, you're saying dollar CAD four hour is the red bar leaving a wick on the broken resistance, not a fair retest. Now let's just go back to dollar CAD. So you're saying it's a red bar leaving a wick on the broken resistance, not a failed retest. You're talking about this candle here? So you say, so you're saying that candle there. So you say, is that not, it's not a failed retest because it, it's a retest which held. So if you drop, if, you know, if you broke that down to a one hour chart, the one hour charts here, it went up and that four hour candles here. So it's come up, come back down to sit on it, to bounce back up. You see on the one hour chart, how all these one hour chart lows are forming on top. So that four hour candle you're talking about there, that's just a negative candle, but look at the close. So we move above, we go up to a fresh high, and then we trade down and it does trade below, but the buyers then push it back above that level and close above. So it's actually rejecting that level to be support on that candle. All right, and then later over here, it's holding to move up. Okay, hopefully that helped you. All right, so on the dollar franc, we're obviously holding here on top of that weekly high, 62% level, 
if you're wanting to trade this pair, you know, we'll break it down to a 15 minute chart and, you know, you might, be able to draw a fib in here if this one if this can pull back this is the current low of the day you could look for the opportunity of a pullback can it retest this area seven am set levels at 91.44 support levels at 91.47 so that would be a great level to watch if it can pull back before moving higher all right so again I wouldn't be trading the dollar yen, or I certainly wouldn't be trading the dollar yen to the upside at the moment. And we don't know if there's going to be any more intervention. So, you know, as a general rule at the moment, I think for the yen pairs, can't even contemplate trading a yen pair to the upside at the moment. Now that we're hit 150 and we've had the intervention, I think it's a question of looking at structure and seeing how it starts to form and does it start to form a reversal to the downside. However, at the moment, the spike down on the day chart here just spoke, you know, just came into, that's actually a historical high on the monthly chart, 147.68. And we came into daily support here, 147.94, and then clearly spiked back up. All right, and this line here is a daily top from over here, which we're just above. Hold, just holding above that top. So we're, what are we, one, 111 pips away from 150 at the moment. To the four hour. So it is a little bit still negative here on the four hour. It's kind of a lower top, lower bottom, but it's a little bit wishy-washy. I mean, if you wanted to trade this pair, I think, you know, it'd be a patience game. We just got above 150 and the thing dropped. You know, seeing if it can get up, up close to where it dropped from. You know, the 79 percent levels at 149.56. The level we dropped from was up, was up here. That was the break anyway. You know, seeing if price can come up to where they first intervened. You can see today, drawing a fib across the, the range of the intervention, today's, yesterday we were able to get a little bit above the 62 level for quite a while, and that started to hold through the latter end of yesterday. Today we're just holding here. So if you're wanting to trade this pair, and we are already, had, already the 50 minute chart is already starting to break down, maybe we're just holding at 62% level here to trade down. But you may see another revisit, which you can quite clearly see here, all the sellers are in this area at the moment. That's where it was hold, held through yesterday through late London, New York. And today we haven't been quite able to get up to the highs of New York. So quite clearly sellers are there. So another test up there could be, if you're not already had the opportunity to short, I mean, even right now, shorting where it is right now, maybe putting your stop above that, high of yesterday you're only well it is about a 50 pip stop doesn't look like 50 pips but because it was like a big drop there's a bit more risk if you're just putting your stop just above that high it's about a 30 pip risk at the moment but you know if you can be patient and see whether it holds at 149 comes back up to 149 and then maybe a, a 30 pip stop above that would offer you a limited risk and then are we going to continue the decline so that's how you can construct things with limited risk all right so definitely yesterday you know the air i'm drawing in here this is where price action started a whole through the whole of new york as the news gets released later for the us we may see a revisit up up to at least the high of new york which Hive New York is probably around about 149.13. And then what, what happens is price fail there. That's where we're pretty much failing today as it stands. And Tammy, still talking to you about dollar CAD. So Tim, regarding dollar CAD, you're asking me 
what I mean is, is the close of the bar above the resistance level not a failed retest? I don't, know, I don't know what you mean by a failed retest. To me, on the dollar cad here on that candle, the fact that that candle's closed above this high means that that high is becoming support. So I'm not quite sure what you mean by a failed retest. Because if, if we're dealing with this high, a failed retest, well, I'm not sure, quite sure what you mean by the term failed retest. I mean, for me, that four hour candle's closed above. So that's the first candle that's starting to commit above that high point. The next candle trades below, but closes back above. That's telling you that supports there now above that high to move higher. All right, so that's my interpretation. Not quite sure what you mean by failed retest. Because for me, if I just draw some price action in here, if we if we move above that level, what you if if we're moving high, you're looking for price to come to this level to hold to move up. And that's what actually happened here. We, we moved up. So we actually moved up on that blue candle, traded down on the red candle, but actually closed back above. So that to me is support holding to trade up. Then we got a bit wishy what Then we tried to move back below again on that candle low, but then we closed back above. So that's support. Then we came down to here for support and traded up. All right, so that's my interpretation of what's going on there. Hopefully that helps. If it doesn't, send me an email um, with a bit more information. And maybe send me a chart and just draw something on it if I haven't answered your question. All right, so let's get into uh, gold to finish off. Slug, you asked me about dolly yen. Do I, do, I, do I think the move down on the dolly yen was due to an inter intervention on just a market move? I think it was intervention because it happened. I was actually just going to bed and the US news came out because just before the high of the day was here at 149.97. And then the US news came out on the midnight and it just traded above one. 150 went up to 14 pips above and then just went like kaboom and there was no news to drive it you know the past you know like the euro dollar to the us dollar didn't move up 200 pips so it wasn't just a, a news event um it would it would have been intervention because because if 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 it was purely US dollar weakness coming in, we would have seen that same movement on the Euro dollar. And, you know, we didn't see the same, we didn't see the same movement, did we? Tuesday on the Euro dollar, where's the same movement? It's not, it doesn't exist. So, you know, in my mind, whether or not they've come up, come out, I don't think they've come out and said that they did intervene, but I'm pretty sure they intervened because uh, it looks like an intervention. You know, one 15 minute candle moves down over 200 pips. All right, let's get into gold. Might be seeing a short term bottom down here on gold, but the trends are down. So it's a bit tricky at the moment. This might need a one or two day movement up before moving down further. The thing that's going to dictate what gold does at the moment is we've got the job figures coming out. Is the S&P 500 overextended and needs a much more of a high correction or not? Uh, this looks very nasty though down here. We were kind of, kind of in this area here where we we're a little bit mixed. And I'm sure this, this area here that I've color coded in is a weekly area of old support. Uh, I'm sure a lot of traders found themselves wrong because then we've had countless strong days down here, but we may need at least one or two days up here at the moment. So 
it's a bit low down on the spectrum to be a seller in the short term. All right, and we're getting very close to weekly support here too. So if we come down to support here and we hold, we can't really trade down through. I suspect we would hold here to move back up to weekly resistance. All right. This is actually the low of the year as well. So potentially we we'll, would we'll get a bounce there unless, you know, something significant drives price action. So Edwin, you're watching a day resistance at 1866. And Slavi is talking to me again about the dollar yen. Um, so you're saying the, the original intervention bounced back up very fast. Is that due to buyers rushing in straight away to buy the dip? Not necessarily. It's just a question of just because you're seeing the price feed moving, right? Let's just go back to the dollar yen and we'll get back to the gold in a minute. Is because, of course, this rushed up very quick it may have rushed all the way back up here and then let's just have a look at the five minute chart All right, so here's the intervention. This must be the intervention spot, is it? Oh, here it is. All right. So it actually drops, you know, all the way down in five minutes. When this is coming back up there, it's not necessary just because price is moving back up because this is this is just plotting the sell price, right, as it's changing. Is it doesn't mean when that moves down, it doesn't necessarily mean that every price point as this is moving down is getting traded at it or you know every price point could be getting traded at but not necessarily very heavily because it's all about you know if somebody's selling you know down through there the dollar yen there has to be a buyer at the other side so when somebody's selling a large amount the reason why that drops very quickly is the orders on this on the sales so we've got lots of orders coming in to sell. The orders on the buy side that are meeting the sell side can be thin, very thin. So if there's large sell orders coming in and the, and the buy orders are very thin, that's why this rushes down very quickly because orders are getting cleared, so price keeps moving down to the next order and the next order and the next order. So that's why it moves down very quick. And then once all those buy orders are cleared out and the sell orders have been filled, there's no, there's no more selling going on because the sell order has been, been filled and then price will just come back up. doesn't mean to say anything's really getting traded because the market's then trying to find an equilibrium between the buyers and the sellers. And the price may be there, but the orders can be very thin. All right. Or price just keeps moving. All right. And then price, you know, as the market's trying to find liquidity and then price just moves back up. So. That's why price moves down very quickly and then back up. It's when the orders are very thin. Because if the orders are very thick, you've got a large sell order coming in and there's a large buy order on the other side. They just get met and price never really moves. It's when there's a large order coming in and on the other side of the market, the orders are very, are very thin and small. And that's why price moves very quickly and then bounces back up very quickly. All right, hopefully that was helpful. But I'm pretty sure it was an intervention. All right, so gold, it's very overextended. Uh, Edwin, you were talking about 1866. Uh, I've got 1858 over here. Is this, this is the area that you're watching over here. Right, we could come back to that level. 
I'd be more inclined to think that this is a little bit way overextended and it could come back up to 1884 to 1892. So, I mean, there's always the opportunity that you could trade back up this way because this is very overextended. But I mean, to do that, you need to see the four hour chart quite clearly change its trend. It's very consolidatory at the moment. So, And there's a little, you know, there's some imbalance in here. There's an imbalance. There's, there's a number of imbalances in here. There's a very large one in here. You know, if we just looked at this range, that's the last rally before the last big drop down. This is just sideways. You know, the 62 levels at 1855, that day resistance levels at 1858, four hour resistance there too. So, 79% levels at 1865. You know, that kind of area there could be a good rally point based on the four hour chart. Slavery saying you short gold from 1873. Well, that's nice. Thinking of whether keeping it or closing it. Yeah, you're telling me price action looks overextended, which I've said. But you see, on the hand, it looks like big players are selling gold at the moment and there may not be any meaningful pullback. It may just keep going down to, well, I guess it might go sideways at the moment until we have the job figures. Uh, you know, it is also worth watching for what's happening in the bond market at the moment. So 10-year 10 10 -year bonds are like flying at the moment. If you, you know, if you drop this... 10 year bonds into a monthly chart. We're heading towards uh, 5.28, which was the high before the GFC moved down. So if this keeps flying north at such a heavy rate at the moment, you know, gold potential is going to keep moving down. But if this started to show some form of top, then I think gold could pull back. So we had a negative day yesterday, but you know, monitoring that 10 year bonds, if that holds its trend and keeps moving up, very strong at the moment. You now that strong move up is really the opposite of what we're seeing on, on that gold move down. So but it's overextended. I, you know, I think this will come, but I would, if it was me looking at price action on the day chart, how often do you see something start to hold here for a couple of days and then continue down in the same vein. It doesn't normally, it, it rallies back, doesn't it, for at least one or two days. So, you know, it might, might be a good time to take profit and get, get set for the next sell. If, you know, if, if that sell comes around. Edwin, you're saying the 1866 levels back from June 22. all right so you're using that level uh i would personally i would be i would be using that level because it's it's all gotten hidden with this price action moving up there and down there so then i'd be using this area but you know if i'm being perfectly honest at the moment in terms of where support and resistance is uh, because of such a large drop down here, it, it will usually come back to this area. All right, it could come back to that area that I put in at 1858, but I'd be more inclined to think that if it has a significant rally back, it's coming to this area. All right. All right, so gold, a bit tricky at the moment. We have a definite strong breakout, but strong moves like that, if we did get down to this support level, often it doesn't move through support and then it'll rally back up. So I'd actually be thinking that this could actually get down to support and then come back up to this area to then have another go at that area. So you end up with something that looks like, you know, comes down to here. Comes back up to broken the broken weekly area. 
and then comes down that way. I think I'd be more inclined to think it would do that, depending on what price action wants to do, trading around the major levels. All right, but you know, gold, it's not easy. You know, if you're not already in short, it's, it's difficult, you know. When something moves very, very strong and hard, if you're not in in the early phase, it's always difficult then to try to get in or do something once it's deliberating, is it going to keep moving or not? So it's always nice to be getting in in the early phase. It's like on, you know, the likes of the euro yen at the moment, you know, it's start, this, I'm going to wrap it up, but this is maybe starting to break down. 50 minute chart on the pound, pound yen. This is maybe starting to break down. And surely maybe the Aussie yen, that's, you know, that's already starting to break down from its 94.66 level. So always getting in in the early part of the phase. So that, so that uh, pound yen is a very good example. You know, on the four hour chart, it's rallied to the 62 level. So we've had, we've had the first collapse, we've rallied back up. Are we going to get the next collapse? So getting in, in the, the kind of retracement topping out phase at the 62 area or close to, that's where you want to get in for the next move down. Trying to get in once the next move down is already in its profit taking phase, potentially it's very difficult. There's a right time to get in and then there's a wrong time to get in. And you want to be, you know, in the downtrend, you want to be selling the rallies, not getting in, at chasing the bottom of part of the move with the fear of missing out. All right, everybody, uh, that's it for me for this week. Next week, we'll be back with you on Tuesday, 8 o'clock, with more analysis from me on Tuesday, okay? Tuesday the 10th. So if you want to be with me, then just register your interest. On, and on Wednesday, I'm going to take you through the head and shoulder pattern. All right. I'll just check my questions. Uh, Timothy said, I failed retest means the broken resistance level becomes support. All right. So yeah, that candle to me looks like broken resistance became support. All right. Great. All right, everybody. Just be aware of the US job figures coming out. Be safe there. And other than that, have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, everybody.